But because I think what you get out of Scott Cochran outside of his coaching acumen, which we don't have any idea mm. what it is yet, it's a good hire. Mm. I think the Bama furor is is icing on that cake. What's up, Georgia Bulldogs fans? My name is Scott Duvall, and you're listening to episode 223 of the Waiting Since Last Saturday podcast. My two co-hosts, Will Leach and Tony Waller, join me today as we have a few very interesting UGA football news items to discuss. Earlier this week, Coach Kirby Smart surprised the entire college football world and most of the state of Alabama when he hired away Scott Cochran, who is Nick Saban's de facto, or I'm sorry, who was Nick Saban's de facto number two guy for the Crimson Tide football program. So Scott Cochran, what's he going to do? He is transitioning from the world of strength and conditioning coach at Alabama now to special teams coordinator here at Georgia. Only time will tell if he can actually make an impact on the field, but the optics of Kirby being able to ride in and poach Coach Cochran from Saban is a really good look for the Georgia Bulldogs during this quiet offseason. We'll also discuss the Dogs and Clemson Labor Day weekend kickoff game scheduled for the start of 2021 and finish up the show talking about the 8-1 and Diamond Dogs and the final few games of what has proved to be a disappointing season for Coach Crean and the men's basketball team. And we hope this is a nice surprise for y'all to see this off-season podcast episode appear in your podcast player. And thanks for tuning us in today. Uh, We're excited to bring you episode 223. And without any further delay, here's Will and Tony to get it started. Yeah, like either be cold or either rain or either. Yeah, Yeah. it's welcome to February and early March in Georgia. Yeah, I mean, we've we've talked on text messaging how Tony's softball team and my son's baseball team has had yeah, practice. Same thing with we, we finally had our second practice tonight. Yeah. Second, second practice, practice tonight. Us too. That's why we had our we're, first. That's why we're getting together. What ten forty five on Wednesday or yeah, something? It yeah. feels like we did catch the end of the Georgia basketball game, um, which was which was didn't go as, as fun as the last standing was. Yeah. I had recorded. I had recorded us watching the last minute and a half of the overtime, but um, Will did not know I was recording and he used some words that just, we just, Scott can't even beep out. <laughs> yes. Um, so the context. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I did not curse. I didn't no, say, I even... didn't even talk about politics. Right. Yeah. I just talked about something that uh, generally speaking uh, would not behoove us to yeah. want to put on this podcast. Exactly. Right. Exactly. Right. Yeah, so. Albeit something that is still nevertheless very true. It's also true. true. <laughs> it's very true. Oh, he also told so. a joke. Yeah. <laughs> Um, Sorry, Scott. I, like, Mark no, that time I, down. I actually want this to be like a contest now. Like, I want to hear. Here's my request to the WSLS Hive. Are they a Hive? Yeah, I think they are. Um, our crew. We can't say they're a Hive. That's a Georgia Tech thing. Crew. Um, oh, yeah. They're, yeah, they're they're our uh, our pack. Our pack. Yeah. Our wolf pack. Our little. Our three man. Yeah. Three I, man you know, pack. I saw. I, I took the boys to see Call of the Wild. I thought you were about to say the Hangover. No, 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 no. <laughs> Don't let the beard I fool you. Mean, actual child. dogs. Actual dogs. Well, what does he call CGI the dogs. Yes, CGI dogs. Yes, basically like one step removed from Scooby Doo. Yeah, I heard. And, the, I did hear the yeah. uh, the review, and I thought, yeah. yeah, that's why I don't want to watch it. <laughs> but uh, but here's the forge good thing. Anyway, it doesn't matter. The point is, is uh, uh, my my sons have now gotten obsessed. With uh, with like a pack of dog, a pack of, and so and like I, I went in, they were they were not in bed the other day at night when they were supposed to, and I went in there, and when was on William's back yelling mush, mush. <laughs> <laughs> that checks out. <laughs> yeah, sounds about right. Anyway, the point is, is that uh, uh, here's my question for the for the crew. Um, uh, I want you to tell us what you think we were talking about. Yeah, right. <laughs> I'm actually curious yeah. uh, what because because just to be clear, we were talking about something that is definitively true, 100 percent, not right. political. I wasn't cursing, nope. nothing gross, nope. or anything like that at all. Nothing that it would be personally embarrassing can, to any of us. Can we give them a, a general like? Overview of what we, the topic. How about we just go with this? We talk about Georgia sports on this podcast. We also live in Athens there and Akron. That's great, and yeah. therefore uh, um, yeah. uh, sometimes things you have to be careful about because uh, in, in that regard. And it was not a d- joke. And it was not a d- joke, right? And so. um, okay, I'll just Scott's run his pen out. I'll right just say what it was. I, I want to say this before, but there's this offensive lineman's dad. Who uh, it was like a lawn chair, and have you ever heard about this? Well, you know, I, people keep asking me, 
how important is the end of a little finger to consortium mean? <laughs> and like, you don't know people's lives. Everybody has a thing. Maybe that's their thing. <laughs> end so, of a little finger. That sounds like <laughs> end of like, the little finger. Like, like, like a Which, dances with wolves character. <laughs> or, uh, or like end a, of a little finger. Or like a really bad From much emo band. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yes. So. Yes. Anyway. So, uh, hey, some stuff has happened. Since, uh, for, hi, everyone. So I've heard. <laughs> Some stuff has happened. Uh, um, I don't know about you guys. I, I don't the best way to get into the topic, but uh, I feel stronger. Do you guys just naturally just feel stronger? I'm, I'm hoarse. Yeah, yeah. Well, I I stand by my statement that I put on Twitter unless the guy shows up in all black uh, because he's at a funeral. Yeah. It wasn't a great hire. Um, of course, famously, Scott Cochran uh, posted or said while cameras were present uh, about Georgia wearing black in the 08 game, right? Yep. Uh, well, they're going to be wearing all black because it's a funeral, and he wasn't wrong. <laughs> um, little did we know it was going to take seven years for the body to get cold, but, you know, <laughs> hey, whatever. Um, the, the, here's my question to the, for the group on this and Tony starts off. Um, obviously, a large part of the cool part of that with this is Bama Mad. Bama Mad... And that is for some fun. people. That yeah. is fun. That is fun. That is fun. But tangibly speaking, in addition to the fact that this is someone that Kirby's been trying to get for a while, mm-hmm. and uh, and you're taking away a key Alabama person, and but you're also putting him in a position that he has not been in before. Uh, tangibly speaking, outside of Bama Mad, uh, what's the actual best thing that we're getting out of this? Uh, I think there are two really good things. I can't say which one's best yet. The first is um, is just what you hit on uh, the intensity, his level to level detail. I mean, not for nothing. I mean, he is the staff member who's been with Nick the longest. Period. Full stop. Which gets to the second. Point. I didn't know that he had appeared in commercials with Saban. Yeah, uh, yeah. He has like a five k that people run. Yeah. yeah, and it's called the yeah 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 five k. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So like there is a like there is a demoralizing thing for them. Well, well there is, there is. Which gets me, but it gets me to the second thing about his mm. time with Saban is that if you were to bring in somebody who is as versed in the process and whatever that means, um, in how much he means to. Not just the program, but to Nick Saban personally. If he can come in and be that almost chief of staff consigliere type to Kirby, that that means something. Now, I will also say that, and I've, I've harped on this since Kirby was hired, he has now brought in two former head coaches in Monken and Luke, and also someone, if you talk to Alabama people, that will be honest with you about it, that will tell you that um, Cochran is – as much a part of the steadying influence on the coaching staff there with the turnover they've had over the years uh, as anybody. Um, I have to say that Georgia didn't make the flashiest hires. Georgia didn't make, um, they didn't make hires that are, that might even might not even pay off in 20. 20, right? But I think when we look back on this, we're going to look back and see the hires that he made, particularly between the Sugar Bowl and two days ago, mm-hmm. um, to, I, I wouldn't say watershed, maybe that's not the right way of looking at it, but are really super spectacular hires. And you throw in the Luke hire, uh, which happened before the Sugar yeah. Bowl, of course. Um, I think the, the where, where Cochran fits in all that is that he brings another piece of not just the stability pie, but also building almost a um, a, a super brain trust. And uh, look, I could be wrong about that. And I think there are some Alabama people that would laugh at that derisively. He's never coached on. No, no. Nick wouldn't let him on the field. Frankly, that might be why he's leaving, is Nick wouldn't let him on the field. And what's he going to do, right? Is he going to stick around for four more years until Saban retires or dies in the job or whatever? I mean, who knows? Saban could be coaching 25 years from now. But is he going to stick around there and just never get the opportunity to coach on the field, something he's professing want to do? I mean, he looked at going to Oxford, Mississippi to coach with Lane Kiffin to get on the field. If you have a choice between going to Oxford and coaching with Lane Kiffin (laughs) or coming to Athens and coaching with Kirby Smart – you know, putting aside a, you know a good Coke guy and the fact that you get to live in Oxford, which is probably the only college <laughs> town that's better that's better suited to somebody that's, that likes Coke uh, than, than Athens <laughs> is you you pick Kirby Smart in Athens every time. Um, I want to get back to Kirby again for a second, but you touched on something I think is really important. 
which is, you know, I remember when we were at uh, the pub on Main at the end of the year and talking about, is he going to do something about Coley? Uh, what a big do- what, what a big moment this is. Will he be stubborn or will he make a change? And to me, I felt like he was almost screwed either way. Either he stubbornly stuck with Coley or he made like a crap, get Bobo, almost sort of like panic move to feel like to appease outside critics or to appease... Uh, boosters who are like, change the offense, change the offense. Uh, I have to say, uh, I, if you're going to have as much turnover as they have had this offseason, this is how you do it. You do it from positions of strength rather than doing it from desperation. And to me, that's what's really the most impressive part about this is basically he has, uh, whether he's listened to everyone that was mad about Coley or he's just... Mm-hmm. Decided he didn't want Coley and has made moves. Either way, there's mm-hmm. not there's no sense they're like, uh oh, Kirby's worried. He has to shake stuff up. If anything, it's the opposite. The idea it is look how much power and strength that I have here now, um, uh, and and this is him exercising that. Think, uh, in, in, in a in a way that as opposed to crap, I better make a move. Yeah. Like it's it is the move of frankly a very confident. And even even more experienced head coach than he is. The fact and, that he didn't telegraph any of these moves. He yeah. didn't telegraph the Munkin move or the Luke or the Cochran move. In fact, the Cochran move smacked of almost like the the first thing I thought of is, is like in a Christmas store and Ralphie finally hits the bully, you know, just out of nowhere. And that's kind of what he is, he's done to Alabama. Alabama fans were losing their minds. On Twitter, it was like the first time they've been mad since they uh, put Sudafed behind the counter at the pharmacy. (laughs) (laughs) It's Scott Spring the Heat tonight, guys. I I saw that from Buck Blue. It's still good. Anyway, Um, I mean, I think Scott hit on something that I I find to be very important (laughs) because it speaks to not only Kirby's preparedness, but his willingness to be the coach that we worried he wouldn't be when we got together back at Pebble, Maine, which is. Um, somebody that's willing to make bold moves, but right moves, not right moves, bold moves, but smart moves. And the fact that they were all done almost with a little fanfare as they were done, right? I mean, we lose Pittman, people are hand-wringing. And Georgia people, yes, but national media, oh, it's just the deal crumble. It's starting to crumble. It's happening exactly, here. Exactly. And he goes and hires a former head coach, Matt Luke, and somebody that, frankly, I thought was going to not – if you had told me George is going to hire Matt Luke, I'm like, yeah, right. Why would Matt Luke come here? He's a he's an SEC head coach, and we hire him as position coach, not as a coordinator. Yeah, he's not right. an, he's not an associate head coach. No, yeah, right, right. and so that happens. And my God, the guy can recruit, and he's not a terrible coach. If you yeah. look what he did with a patchwork offensive line in the Sugar Bowl, and, and uh, who that entire offensive line came away from that game being like, this we is love this my guy. guy. Well, we love this one. Guy. Well, what, oh, yeah. whatever. But you know what? <laughs> Maybe Matt Luke does not like people with parts of their fingers missing. That could be a thing. Or he just doesn't like people that don't consortium well. End of the little finger. End of the little finger. So um, Is that going to be all year? End of the little finger. God, I hope so. Um, (laughs) She just accepted the Oscar for Marlon Brando. Uh, End of a little finger. (laughs) That is a deep cut, man. So uh, he's a good dog. Um, So the other part about it is – you, then you, you, sleep, you know, it's like, well, what's going to happen? What's going to happen? He then he went and hired somebody as a former offensive coordinator and from the NFL and a former head coach at, at a D one program, and for at least a short time, kept the offensive coordinator around on yeah. staff as like coach, right? <laughs> right. Like you can stay if you want. <laughs> you can stay. It's fine with us. We got space for you. Crazy. And then the most stunning of all is like, you know, just a random Tuesday. We're going to go hire Alabama strength and conditioning coach, the high space strength and conditioning coach, the most visible strength and conditioning coach. Love Aaron Feld, love Scott Sinclair. Get back coach extraordinaire, curly Q mustache extraordinaire. I mean, Scott Cochran's in his own commercials, yeah. right? There's no other strength and conditioning coach doing that. Period. Even Aaron Feld with his awesome mustache is not doing that. So, you know, the the fact that all those things happened, all those things happened without fanfare, without him being leaked, without weeks of speculation. Kirby is – he he has shown himself to be super prepared. He has a Rolodex. You have to look it up, kids. He has a Rolodex of people who he he knows that he can make a call and they are willing to come to Athens. 
That's huge. Yeah, that's and, super huge. And then also, it's also worth noting, and I think Mark Rick would probably say this if you could get him to drink enough milk. Um, that he's on, a, um, he's on a plane to Jerusalem. Yeah, is he really? Yeah. Oh, okay. Um, well, I'm still going to make a milk joke and be in calcium. I'm, I'm, high. I'm sure he's there. But yeah, there's also total backing from the athletic department in a way that, like, the the idea is like this is the highest paid. Uh, strength and conditioning coach in the country. He could be the highest paid special team coach in the country. Yeah, when this like the, is over with. That's what I'm saying. He's not strength and conditioning. He's like not. Scott Sinclair still has that. Yeah. No, he's special teams. Yeah, that's right. what I'm saying. Okay. He's an on-field okay. coach. Yeah. That's the only way you're able to get him. Yeah. I mean, he wouldn't have come. I mean, well, this. Sinclair's done a fine job anyway. I, yeah. I do like the idea that like, maybe, like, do they do they do they both hold Kirby back? Like, does one have one side of the belt? <laughs> no, one Sinclair. The other side of the belt. Hey, let me tell you something. Sinclair is he has Kirby's belt and. Um, <laughs> I assume Cochran has, is uh, cell phone police and yeah. someone that gets uh, that's in charge of making sure that we use the right kick and tee. Well, because that's another whatever. thing. That's another thing too with uh, with him with Cochran is according to everybody drink the great Seth Emerson story and the Alabama beat reporter who also co lined on it um, that um, one of the best parts about the athletic by the way is you can actually just get the beat reporters to yeah. cooperate and put a story together as yeah. opposed to the yeah. guy from the Alabama newspaper and the guy from the, uh, the Athens newspaper anyway. Um, Apparently, like he's not just—he doesn't be strength and conditioning guy. He's the one the players go to with all of their problems. Yep. He's the one they go to for like personal stuff. And that's what's talking about—the consigliere yeah. type, good cop yeah. to Nick's bad cop. Yeah. And that, I mean, that's huge. I mean, the, the, look the the thing. The other thing about this is like everybody's like, well, he's never even been on field guy. I mean, he's came from the NBA. Um, that's not an unfair assessment, but I I I would suffice. I think it's safe to say that. He has been around uh, football long enough. He has been around special teams long enough. And he, according to what you read, mm-hmm. Athletic actually is one of the places that, that talked about this. He did coach the the scout teams on special mm-hmm. teams. And frankly, it's not like when you start talking about special teams, it's not like you can't make a lot of hay with analysts. And Georgia has hot and cold running. Out. I think there's three analysts that focus on special teams only. Um I am moderately concerned about his experience. If we had not hired, if we'd hired someone else random um, to come in and a former strength and conditioning coach, Aaron Feld, to be the special teams coordinator, that would be concerning. Um, But because I think what you get out of Scott Cochran outside of his coaching acumen, which we don't have any idea Mm -hmm. what it is yet, um, it's a good hire. Mm I think I think the Bama furor is is icing on that cake. And isn't it worth it just for his mentality and the way he does get excitable? Special teams is a perfect position yeah. for a non field coach. Go out there and bang your head. Right. I mean, yeah. I mean that said And it can't get any worse than what Georgia special teams, you know, with oh, trick plays sir. and everything. Sir, special teams can everything can always get worse. I have to say the first time they give up a pump for turn for a touchdown. The Scott Cocker's never coached on the field before. He should be a strength and conditioning coach. People are going to get real. But it'll be defense. worth it to watch the camera see that's <laughs> following him to watch him lose his mind yeah. in a very special way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or something. But, yeah, it's a cool thing. It's, it's a good thing, and it's just another reminder that, uh, you know, well, listen, maybe this all, maybe we'll get that title that everybody wants, and maybe they won't. But, like, the people in charge clearly know what they're doing. Well, September 19th sure is uh, interesting, even yeah. more so. Yeah, now. Quite, quite. Speaking of uh, September's on uh, the schedule or or, uh, or new scheduling, new yeah. things. The big thing that happened is I don't know what you guys are doing. Uh, Labor is it Labor Day weekend? It's it not is a, Labor Day weekend. Labor yes. Day weekend of twenty twenty one. I guess I'll be in uh, Clemson. No, I'll, no I'll you'll be, be in Charlotte. Charlotte. Be we Robert. will not be watching San Jose State play okay. here. That's better. <laughs> I'm, I'm fine with that. <laughs> I, I'm, I am fine with that. Uh, are we all staying with Robert? Uh, I'm yeah, assuming. Yeah, yeah. Robert. I Robert's am. already agreed. I'm to yeah, I'm host with, the tailgate and sweet. host us. Oh yeah, I, I assumed as much. Well, I mean, the last time I went to Charlotte, Robert did host the tailgate, and they're still over at Jim's house. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, so. um, and, and Clem. So, uh, you know, the last time we went to Charlotte, um, we uh, we did tailgate with Robert close to the stadium. Um, I think it's I think it's necessary for me to tailgate, not having to cross the street to get to the stadium, uh, based on what happened last time. <laughs> but you know, that's you live, you learn, yeah. and you you yeah. pay tickets for jaywalking. Been there. So you got um, a jaywalking ticket? Sure, let's go with what it, okay. that's what we called it. So. Um, but you know, I think the police officers were not happy with my street crossing acumen. Uh, Did you zig or zag? Yep, 
that's one of the things I did. I just crossed against the line. Um, I did sit in Jerry Richardson's box for a while, though, because that was the, that was the bulk bowl. And, oh, wow. you know, you could go lots of places if you just walked like you belonged. <laughs> but that uh, box has got some stories. I don't even uh, want to think about it. Yeah. I have to throw those shirts away now. That was uh, Nick Chubb and, uh, against uh, Todd Grantham. Grantham. Yeah. yeah. That, was, that was me not even realizing that Bryce Ramsey had come in and had thrown for three touchdowns or something. <laughs> so... That was um, oh, yeah because Hudson Mason got hurt. Yep, yep, that's right. Yeah. So, so, but that, I mean, I have to say now knowing that there is a, a Clemson game on the neutral field starting uh, the twenty twenty one season uh, with uh, uh, Brock Vandegrift uh, perhaps as the starting quarterback in that game. So let's let, can we hmm. let's talk about that for a minute. Yeah. Um, it's uh, Vandegrift for the game of that game. So if you think about it, both of these programs, both of them are likely to be starting a new quarterback. Trevor's going to be gone. Mm-hmm. If you, if any, if anybody believes anything right. about what happens after this football right. season, right. is is uh, Trevor Lawrence is going to be? Yeah, uh, it's a, it a is a good time to high. play Clemson in the first game of the year. It's also a good time to play Georgia mm-hmm. first game of the year because they'll be breaking a new quarterback. Also, the defense is different, yeah. and frankly, it could be a rebuilding year as much as rebuilding years are for Georgia and Clemson for both of them. It is interesting to me that. These uh, this pro this particular program and that particular program are going to be in very similar situations. Let's put aside mm-hmm. history uh, in the past five years. They're going to be a very similar situation with personnel, re- rebuilding, and also rebranding what they are as they head into the twenty twenties. Mm-hmm. Um, and that this game beca- came together as quickly as it did. Yeah. Um, it is wild that it came together as quickly. Yeah. As it did. Clemson had to drop Wyoming. And we dropped San Jose State, but don't feel bad for him. We paid him 1.8 million, and then they quickly picked up a game with USC. Okay, I think or Stanford, one of the two. Yeah, um, Some, is, is Some San Jose State D one. They are right. Yeah, they're D one. Okay, okay. Yeah. By the way, just speaking of Southern Cal, I give them props. They had scheduled for the first time ever an FCS team and dropped that team because they were able to, to get San Jose State. Then that's why I was. I knew there was a connection yeah. there. Yeah. So they will remain uh, the only program that has not played an FCS team. I think. And boy, you start looking at their schedules moving forward. There it's going to be. It's going to be. <laughs> it's going to be fun. Yeah. It's going to be a lot. Yeah. But this is what Kirby bargained for, right? Yeah. I mean, adding a Clemson, dropping San Jose State. That just that's putting your money where your mouth is as but, far as creating you know, the schedules. And we will see. We will see if there is ever a time where, for example. Like, let's say this year, Georgia, let's say in two years, Georgia uh, loses to Clemson. Because the, the nice thing about these games is, theoretically, they don't actually kill your season if you lose. In fact, but if they win, they become this sterling thing that you have that mm-hmm. nobody else has. The problem is that only works if you don't, like, say, blow a game to South Carolina right. in the season, in the regular season. Like, that only works. And I don't know, maybe a two loss Georgia team that wins the SEC title game is just going to be forever to go to the, uh, to the, to the playoff. We'll see. But yeah, I mean, the hard part about it is it depends probably what happens with Clemson. I mean, the schedule that year is we open with Clemson the next week, we come home to play UAB. Um, we, of course, have Georgia Florida scheduled already. The other games are Charleston Southern uh, the week before we play at Tech. Uh, and the SEC schedule that year is at Auburn, Arkansas, Kentucky, Missouri, South Carolina, at Tennessee, at Vanderbilt. So our home schedule is UAB, Arkansas, Kentucky, Missouri, South Kakalaki, and Charleston Southern. Um, now, the Clemson series is happening in the future is home and home, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, I, I think there's another one in Atlanta as well as a home and so home. So there's four games with Clemson I think in so. the next, like, 15 years? Yeah. Yeah, we play Clemson probably more than anyone like else. Oregon in Atlanta, Clemson in Atlanta. Yeah, we got and then UCLA's home and home. We UCLA's have home and home with Texas, right? Mm. And Oklahoma is home and home. I mean, we're going to be in our yeah. 60s by then, but yeah, let's go with Tony 60s. Will. I'm let's sorry, go in 60s. we won't. Oh, Tony well, I'll be getting there. <laughs> yeah, I'll be. I'll be <laughs> well. well on hold on. <laughs> Shit, well, I'll be in my 70s. What? What? Yeah, I'll be in my 60s. Okay. I'm not math. It's not my thing yeah. uh, this late at night. Um, so, but, you know, the football schedule did improve for 2021. Um, the home the home schedule, though, is still not great. Not great. It's not great. This year's uh, not we, great and next year's Although not we say great. that and, you know, then turns around Tennessee is decent. So. I know. I know. I, I just think that if eventually maybe these Power 5 schools, especially Georgia, will get away from – 
I'm okay with one Middle Tennessee State, but give me give me a lower Big Ten team, and I know that they won't do. Yeah, a there's home no and home, up, yeah, there's no upside for that. Like again, yeah, I, I'd, I'd love to have Illinois. Yeah, do a yeah, home why, why would, yeah, why would Georgia, no why would Georgia go to Bloomington? No yeah. Georgia. yeah, the only way that a two for one. The only way it would make sense for for Georgia to do that is if Illinois played at Georgia in basketball. and basketball. No, if Georgia, and if Georgia played Illinois at like Soldier Field, yeah, or sure. or Lambeau there's no, Field. There's no real recruiting reason for Georgia to go play that game, right? Right. So, right. so, so yeah, um, there, there, there's no. And I think the reason you're getting these neutral side games too, it's much easier schedule. If well, you they had can to make more money, and yeah, but if you had to make this a home and home, oh sure, then you have to find another day to right. do it. Like now, you can just fit it in, buy out this game here, yeah, get that game. And it's just one, and it's a neutral place. So you don't have to pay it back. And forth. Yeah, and, and North Carolina is a big recruiting ground for Georgia yeah. too. And to get to your point about the money, it's like, look, Georgia, Georgia doesn't lose money on these things, right? right? So Georgia was able to pay out San uh, San Jose State one point eight is what you said. Yep. I didn't see the number, but and also will make more money than they will make in ticket sales that day, and also. You know, whatever increase you, you, you know, modest increase you get from Hartman Fund from having an extra home game. And then the, the only other thing is you might, and if you're a, an Athens, Georgia business owner, you're probably a little bit bummed out about that. Oh, you're not but, happy about this at all. Yeah. Every home game you lose, no matter whether it's San Jose State or whether exactly. it is, you know, fourth ranked Alabama, is a big game, right? That's a big loss for you. Um, but uh, the, the one thing I would add to this is like, the better UGA does at football, the the better the university does, uh, and there are ancillary effects. I mean, we are seeing an uptick in um, nationwide admissions, for example. Uh, well, I was in Michigan a couple weeks ago. Uh, I had two different people who were from the Chicago area whose kids were either waitlisted or had been admitted at the University of Georgia, and because I was wearing UGA gear, wanted to talk to me about UGA. Uh, I played in a poker tournament, and literally I was at the final table. The guy to my right, he, he, they, this is a guy that lives in Grand Traverse, Michigan. His kid's a junior at Georgia. Uh, the guy to my left is from Decula, and all his siblings went to Georgia. Did you win? So, uh, I finished just out of the money. Mm-hmm. So it's a, it's a bummer. I played played well. Not well enough, so uh, but I had fun. Whatever the uh, I, w- I I I went at uh, I went at blackjack and craps, so I didn't lose money. Um, so that does build, and you know the, the argument I hear a lot about that is when you do that, you're you're screwing over to Georgia businesses. There are ancillary uh, Athens businesses. There are ancillary benefits to Georgia playing high profile games, winning high profile games, and being a high profile program that go out beyond the one time hit of a home football game. Um, I am not an actuary, so I can't really tell you what those numbers are, but it it does stand to reason that there are benefits to play this game that benefit the community, maybe not on that first Saturday in, or last Saturday in August or first Saturday in September. It helps whenever you get in the is. playoff. It certainly helps you that way. It does. <laughs> well, I like the fact that it's Atlanta this year, neutral site. It's Charlotte next year. I'm fine with that. Yeah, I'm, I, I, like, I like a neutral site game every once in a while. Um, it's I wish it wasn't just, on Monday next year. That's yeah, the, the problem. Monday, with that the game. Monday game is a problem. I mean, this this yeah. year, yeah, yeah, yeah. But Clemson Monday, will be on, sa- on right. a Saturday. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, but this is. I mean, to have it on Monday in Atlanta, like it's not even like <laughs> it's just. It is kind of annoying. But it is a holiday, so traffic will be a little bit. It's probably going to kick off at seven forty-five. Yeah, oh, at, means, at the earliest. Yeah, so we won't so, get home until. Yeah. It's going to be brutal. To so in our season tickets that we just made our donation, do we get an option? I mean, I guess I should know this. Do we get an option to buy that game as well, or is that just I don't know. Like Did you get an option to buy the, uh, oh, yeah, be included, the North I'm Carolina sure. yeah. game in Atlanta? Yeah, because I yeah. got tickets to that. So yeah. You got tickets, or you got option to buy extra I, tickets? I went to that game. Okay. Yeah, okay. I got no, no he's talking about in the future, unless you're prophesying. North Carolina from couple years back. Right. Oh, you're talking about the, the first Kirby game. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. I, thought, I thought you were yeah. asking about Virginia. No, the, I'm, I'm asking, is Virginia yeah. going to be like North Carolina? I, I, I guess you're I right. So, yeah. I guess you're right. But the problem is, like, they cap it at, like, a certain amount of tickets that Ticket you can order. And, yeah, and yeah. I, haven't, I haven't seen the faculty staff yet, but I, I presume that is an option. Right, right. Uh, you, not everyone will get that, but it will be treated the same way as an away game. Um, this is, I mean, I do think having it be a Monday night will make it a little bit less desirable for people, to be honest. Yeah. Like, well, you can't make a whole weekend out of yeah, it. Yeah. Well, you can, but, but yeah. the, the weekend's going to have to include to. Tuesday. Yeah. <laughs> when was the last time Georgia played a Labor Day? Because I know they've historically done it back in the 80s. Or I, Didn't they have a famous game? Probably like that UCLA game. Was that UCLA? I, I mean, in 
I think it was UCLA. We played on Labor Day in like 82 or 3 I or 4. I want to say they beat Clemson on Labor I mean, Day. Heck of a night. trivia question. I know. I didn't prepare. Yeah, it's nothing I'm wrong sorry. with that. It's by herself. It's, it's, it's Georgia way played Labor Day games. There we go. Right. We'll add that to it. Right, but these are two legitimate football news items for February. That's, yeah, that's great. <laughs> to say the very least. And, uh, and, and also, Devontae Wyatt, yeah, stop uh, being that guy. Yeah, I think yeah. Uh, I did read the police report briefly about Wyatt, and uh, even though it was uh, classified as a family disturbance, um, it was at one of the residence halls. He and his girlfriend got in an argument. He did not place his hands on her. He was kicking a door yelling they were yelling at each other and in the report it said both of them stated that neither one of them felt in danger yeah yeah so kirby like, on the crawl of espn said kirby will handle this internally yeah i mean i don't know about this not this, great but this is not like an overzealous cop uh uh tickling a guy for having weed in his car or 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 even blowing a little like this is this is like Home invasion is no joke, man. <laughs> well, uh, I, 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 I mean, I have. It wasn't let, home invasion. Let me see if I can say well, this. Like arg- it was called a family disturbance. He was, he was kicking. He was kicking the door. What's they the were, actual charge? They were arguing. Family Trespass. disturbance. Trespass. 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 Or, yeah. He was kicking the door of his girlfriend's dorm room. Um, so I, I'm, I'm trying to be circumspect here. The, uh, listen, I'm not claiming the guy is like yeah. a bad guy one way or the other. I'm just saying that this is. This is not a little weed in the car. Agreed. I agree with that. So here, here's the hard part about this. And I was not there. I cannot say. I cannot put my. I can't put my feet in the shoes of the police officers on the ground there. So it's hard for me to. It's hard for me to say this with clarity. But police officers usually have two tools at their disposal to defray a situation. The first is talking to and separation. Right. Um, so if you show up in a situation like that. As a police officer, you really the only tool you have to defray is like, let's everybody calm down. What happened here? The second tool you have is you you can't make someone come with you unless you place them under arrest. And if they felt like there was danger of continued whatever was going down, you, you have to make an arrest. I mean, I, I, I say you have to make an arrest. I guess you could right. place them in protective custody or in custody, put them in the police car and not arrest them. Um, I am not by no means, please do not think I am impugning that the police officers acted poorly or did anything wrong here. Um, it certainly doesn't seem like they did. No, it doesn't seem like they did. And, but the, the, there is a world where we, there is a world where you live in where both parties are behaving in a poor way. Um, and you are, um, it is literally just an argument where someone has to be arrested in order to fray the situation, and they chose, as often will happen. They, Particularly when someone is kicking in a door. It was at McCorder Hall on <laughs> campus around 3.15 in the afternoon. In response to a female and male fighting, officers spotted people matching the description. <laughs> They're walking outside. One of those was identified as Wyatt. They later stopped Wyatt as he was walking through the dorm lobby. Police say the female left Wyatt's room in Vanderbilt Hall and went back to her room inside McCorder. Authorities then reported Wyatt kicked in the female's door multiple times from the hallway, damaging the door and forcing it open. Okay. I'm sorry. Yeah, no, I mean, no, no, no. He's, if, if, he, if he damaged the he's door. He's lucky it's only trespassing. That's if, home invasion right there. Like he kicked in the door. Well, home, home, Did he go in? Home, hold on. Home invasion is a particular thing. Domicile. It has to be a domicile, not a dorm room. Okay. All right. Um, so wait, wait. The but, dorm room doesn't count as a domicile? No. does not. Why? She sleeps and lives there? It was his room. I thought it was her room. I the, female was left, the female left Wyatt's room and Wyatt, oh, went Hall to her room and, okay. and went yeah. back to her yeah. room inside McCorder. And that's the one that he Wyatt kicked in. Wyatt kicked in the female's door exactly. multiple times from the hallway, damaging the door and forcing it open. Okay. All right. Yeah. I'm sorry, man. Like, yeah. that's no joke. And I, I agree and with I, you. I, I agree with you. And again, I'm not there for the situation. Especially like, if there's, there's damage. Yeah. And when there was a cooling period and he did not cool off. Like, sure. the, I, like to me, that is... Like uh, I'm, I'm not making a judgment on punishment. I'm not making a judgment on what should or should not happen. But I find that I am generally on the side of an athlete when it comes to these kind of like they're very high profile. A lot of times, you, I wouldn't say you get a cop that's overzealous, but you play, uh, players are more easily identified. They are more noticeable. They tend to draw more attention, and therefore, some they might be doing something that any other student would do and get called out and get in trouble for it. I 
I'm very, I'm generally empathetic. This is something that if I did as a college student, they'd arrest me. And I agree with that. And please do not and, think I was, right, I was saying the police right, officer to right, being overzealous right. by any stretch of the imagination. Um, and obviously if someone's going to be arrested in that situation, it's him. He kicked the door in. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So that's a, to a place that's not his. Right. <laughs> exactly. Like, yeah. like I, I'll put it this way. If anyone in the world does that uh, to anyone that I know where they live, I certainly hope they get arrested. Yep. And uh, so, again, the, I, I'm not making any judgment on whether, what should happen to him. But, I mean, uh, it certainly seems this is, this is a, uh, a, a serious offense. And I think it should be treated as such. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Yep. All right. Okay. Um, look at me. So look at me. Basically. Law and order. We I'm, like, should I'm like the... Uh, uh, you're, you're, I think that uh, Tony Waller is soft on crime. Well, I, uh, <laughs> I think you're ready to vote for Bloomberg. <laughs> um, so, baseball. This, so baseball. Baseball. Georgia is eight and one to start the season. And what they was have, their loss? Hey, I I missed their loss. They lost the fourth game of the four game series versus off. Santa Clara. Oh, okay. Santa Clara. That's right. Yeah, the Sunday eight, game. The Sunday eight to game. four. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I went to the they, first. They, game. they had a walk off win. Yeah, yeah. Um, they had twelve inning. They had walk off win. They had twelve inning. That's right. A big comeback on Friday. Yeah, yeah. yeah and, and Santa Clara is good, by the way. Santa Clara is not just yeah. No, they not, were undefeated yeah, before yeah. they started yeah. losing all those yeah. games to Georgia. But they uh, they thrashed Kennesaw State last night. Cam Shepard had two home runs and five RBIs. Well, a couple things are happening that we talked about earlier. Is that they are hitting the ball? Um, That's right. There, that I mean, we'll see how that continues once we get the meat of the SEC schedule. The other thing, of course, the pitching has been spectacular. Although that loss to Santa Clara on the on, on game four is like okay, we can't. I mean, think about we got to be careful pitcher, in five five game series. Yeah, yeah. I mean, they they probably or ran the, out of pitchers. yeah five game weeks, but that's you're going to have those, and you got to be able to manage that late in the season when you're playing in tournaments. So. Well, I watched a lot of those games this weekend, and Ryan Webb uh, is a true weapon for the dogs coming out of the bullpen. I think he had four or five. Relief and he's long relief. He could be your closer or a long reliever, and he relieved him well into the extra innings. Um, and he's been, you know, dealing and and I think he had like eight innings pitched and you know what eight strikeouts or something at some point. And then you've got um, a new guy that you're going to want to pay attention to, Ben Anderson. He's the leadoff hitter. He uh, leads the SEC in runs scored already. Uh, really? sixteen runs scored, fast. Lead off, stolen base guy, uh, perfect table setter for Cam Shepard. Uh, Tucker Bradley was the one that had the walk off homer uh, the other day. But uh, and then Garrett Brown, five innings pitched, eight strikeouts. I think he was the one that pitched against Kennesaw State. But uh, yeah, I mean Tucker Bradley already has four home runs on the year. The dogs are eight and one. They play Tech this weekend. Yeah, one in Athens on Friday, one in Atlanta on Saturday, and the one at Cool Ray cool Field Ray. on yeah. Sunday. And that'd be the first game of the season at Cool Ray, right? I don't think they've had games. No, yet. no, they, they won't even start until yeah, yeah. until like second week. Um, uh, George Baseball note: uh, My longtime friend Keith Law, who yeah. right, covers scouting for uh, the for ESPN for years and years now for the Athletic. Uh, he and I have been trying to get together for years when he comes to a recruiting trip. I'm sorry, a scouting trip. Uh, for uh, for uh, for ESPN and again now the athletic, uh, it's a good sign. He's he's saying I know Georgia is better because I'm actually gonna, I think I'm in town every year. <laughs> uh, but he was actually uh, he has not written up his report yet. But a little scoop, he was actually not impressed with either Hancock or Wilcox when he mm-hmm. saw them pitch. He actually did not well, think either of Hancock's them. Hancock's first start was not yeah. Good. He he actually did not feel like they said. He said I think he said Hancock's mechanics were all out of whack. And uh, uh, he he was he did not have glowing reviews on either one of them, uh, which I, I don't care because they play for Georgia and they're really good. I, I want them to get nice grades, but uh, um, uh, but I I think that uh, the fact that that uh, people the fact that the one of the top talent uh, uh, evaluators in the country uh, is making trip, regular trips to Georgia now is also a really good sign that uh, and they're serving sure fourth. Yeah. Yeah. I, you know, it's funny. I, I I will tread carefully here. I have found the crowd at the baseball. It's interesting to see the difference between the crowds of the football game, crowds of the basketball game, and crowds of the baseball game. Uh, I would say that uh, um, the, the baseball crowds have uh, for for a team. 
How do I put, how do I put this for, for the baseball crowds? When the weather gets better, the crowds get better. Okay. Yeah, I've not been impressed by. I've just. I mean, there's got been a lot of people there. I'm not saying there haven't been people there. There's when the de- weather when the weather yeah. gets better. The there's crowds definitely get better. a lot of like. Uh, I know what you're. Yeah, I'm you know with exactly you. what I'm, I'm saying. I'm with you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, they can be sedate for a. Yeah. Look and growly and grumbly and yeah, very play the game the right way. Yeah, I saw a lot of that too. Yeah. So we are Georgia is a like we're a long way from Alex Box. We're a long way from Duty Noble. Um, you, I, I wish our crowds were as vociferous as what you see at those places in Ole Miss and even FSU, um, and. Into the game and the, enjoying the joy of baseball. Um, there's not a lot of joy in the stands. Not a lot of joy in the stands. Now, there are plenty of very knowledgeable baseball people, uh, but there are also a lot of people who... Um, a lot of people have had those tickets a long time. Yeah. And um, it, 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 it is always interesting to me... Um, the later in the season they get, the more boisterous and fun it becomes. Yeah. And I realize you've only been... Oh, I'm not been to Kids Fest. I've seen it before. Like, right. I saw the end of last right. year. Are yeah. you saying right. it's like the guy that says, hey, sit down, I'm trying to watch the game? No, no, no. I'm, I don't like those people either, but that's probably closer to my... Yeah. To the, these guys. These are the... <laughs> Why are you yelling at Will? That guy's showboating. That guy's a, yeah. that guy's a hot uh, dog. Yeah. Uh, this guy's... Rah, rah, rah. And he, this is nothing. Keith Law wrote about this in his newsletter, and I'm actually going to steal it and write about my newsletter this week. Um, I feel like you could actually do a metaphor for kind of the way America is right now and through the way that replay is done at college baseball games, mm. which is to say, A, it is inefficiently run in every possible way. In that, like, at least when you're at a major league baseball game, when they go, the umpires goes, and look, it's in everyone's best interest to go as quickly as possible. They have a real system that they, they call <laughs> back there. And the players, you know, generally have learned, okay, warm up here, talk over here. It was amazing to me. The, the replays they did on Saturday took so long. I'm sorry, and you said college baseball. You just stopped at college. Yeah, like, and yeah, but yeah, but like, they, they physically walk all the way out to the bullpen and go behind it there. Takes forever. And it takes forever. And then you like, you just look, you realize everyone, players, fans, coaches are literally just staring at that door and waiting for them to come back mm-hmm. for like five or seven minutes. So that's very annoying. But more to the point, calls that are not shown on the screen. Yeah. Are not shown on the screen. But, like, if they go against Georgia uh, after the replay, everybody boos as if that, like, they, like, they, we obviously did not see the call. Like maybe they got it right? Yeah. Like, I mean, they just looked at a video. Where, like, but, but where is that not the case? I know I'm not blaming Georgia fans specifically to that, okay. but like I did, that's not as specific to Georgia okay, fans. Okay, okay. But there is something kind of amazing with the fact, like if you watch a major league baseball game, they will run the replay on the screen, and maybe we can like, oh, I disagree with the they, the way they interpreted that video. Boo, boo, boo. This is I didn't even see the video. Right. I'm just certain because the call went against me. It's wrong. Right. You're like I was actually looking at my phone when it. No, I was not mad. Yes. But it, now I'm mad. Yeah. But I would say if they didn't show replays at major league baseball games that. I mean, they might tear down the stadium at, at Southside South Chicago. I mean, yeah, they, but I mean, it, it just it feels. Uh, this is not blaming a George. This is not George. I'm sure this happens at every college baseball game. But the idea that you are like you're not going like I'm disappointed, or it's that you're wrong when you have zero evidence. Like it's not like it's not like you can look at the call and like you. you it's not like you can watch the call and replay and be like, oh. That was really close. They shouldn't overturn that or something. We have literally no idea what they're looking at. Any chance they're booing them that's the length of the gestation of an elephant? <laughs> no, uh, no, because when the call goes their way, they don't boo. Oh, okay. So, um, no. But they, know, that's well, the call's clearly they're right and did it faster. You know what would probably be kind of fun is pick a big-time SEC series later this spring, and let's do a, treat it like we would a football weekend, and let's do a pregame show. Of the series, and then a post game show. Of the I series. think we could do that if Vanderbilt was coming here, but they're yeah, not. they're, they're that's going kind of a bummer that Vanderbilt is not yeah. coming here. This I'm going to boo that. Yeah, that's what yeah. I'm going to boo. Yeah. Uh, but uh, funny, funny thing is, is our last podcast that we did about five years ago, it seems like more like three weeks ago. Uh, I was talking about how no games were on TV, and then Will quickly corrected, saying like, "Hey, it on the ESPN." 
I've seen every game yeah. on the uh-huh. ESPN yeah, on the app, yeah. app. So, and you hear Jeff Dantzler and David Johnson doing the call. Yeah. So it's, it's Which pretty is cool. good. The, the game on Friday night versus tech is on sec network. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. so probably will not be Jeff and Dave. It will not be Jeff and Dave. It'll be on sec network. Yeah. The same station we watched tonight. Right. Yes. So let's, of which, should we close the basketball? Well, let's briefly talk basketball. We can get over uh, it quickly. I, I will get over this quickly. Uh, basically, you have two more chances to see Anthony Edwards play. Yeah, uh, he's going to be gone soon. There's not. There is not going to be an NIT game. Either they're going to win the, the SEC tournament and go, and go to the tournament, the big tournament, or they're not going to make the NIT. They. Uh, you have to basically be one of the first. 12 teams out. And South they, Carolina might make the NIT. Yeah, the NIT, but yeah, Georgia is in no danger of making the They're in danger of not having a winning record. Um, they had two kind of fun games. They beat, in a way, this season is almost kind of worth it for me because they beat Bruce Pearl, uh, which is always nice. That was a really, really fun game that they won home against Auburn. Yeah. And then they had the great Crump shot. Uh, to, I could not have been more happier that was he than yeah, the shot. Yeah, Crump's had a rough four years in a lot of ways, and he, I think he was constitutionally the opposite of everything that Mark Fox wanted as a player. And but it was so frustrating because Mark Fox did not like offense, and Tyree Crump was the one guy who could shoot. Mm-hmm. So I think he kind of, uh, and he, I think you saw. I think even like kind of on social media had kind of made some anti Fox kind of passive aggressive little motion. So I was glad to see him have that. Uh, I think you saw at the end of the South Carolina game a thing that has dogged Tom Crean his entire career. Uh, late game, he's got uh, he's got a lot of uh, uh, riverboat run in him or early Andy Reid in him. Uh, when it comes to, uh, to late he just, game stuff. he just he just it's almost like he can't he either doesn't think about beforehand <laughs> or can't yeah. game theory out how to tell his players what to do in in the game situation. I don't remember ever seeing after a timeout when they have the ball, a really good play getting run, like getting run and scoring. Like, uh, I just the you, one. I best say the the the, the quick the quick the quick dish to Edwards off yeah, the right, high right, high right, wing. Right, right. That was a great play, but that I mean, obviously he called that play, but that was it. Yeah, yeah, and you, that was it's, it's rare. It's, it's rare. rare to see it. So, yeah. but listen, I I'm still I still feel like Crean is. Uh, I know there's some people that are already mad at him. I think that's. I think that uh, I also think there's been players that you thought would have stepped up more this year that have, haven't. I think Hammonds is a great example of yeah. that. Um, and uh, Hammonds was someone that could that Scott Cochran could do some work with. Uh, I think Hammonds could he could really do a lot of work with Hammonds. But unfortunately, a uh, different wrong sport. Um, I think if the, if this is the season they have next year. I'm I'm worried yeah. because then you've got a. They bunch. should be better next year. They should right. be better. All these and young players, even, even with Edwards gone, if all these young players come, uh, that are going to be better a, a year later, Edwards, for the record, we're talking about this downstairs. Edwards is, is going to be one of the top three picks in the NBA draft next year. He is not one of the top three players no. in college basketball this year, no. and that is a key difference. Like, look at a guy like uh, uh, Luca, Luca Garza, who's the, from Iowa, who's probably going to be the college basketball player of the year. He will not get drafted in either round of the of the of, of the draft. Like that is not how it works. Yeah, and uh, and you know college basketball is a different kind of game. And so Edwards is being drafted for what his body will be able to do down the line. But right now he is not a well-rounded enough college basketball player to be as we want it to be like Carmelo was with Syracuse, where he just comes in and changes everything and wins you a national championship. That's usually not what happens. Yeah, the hard part about it is that with having Anthony Edwards on the team is that there are times where players are there. Are, there are times where the other four guys on the court are almost too deferential yeah. to having him on the court. Yeah, and I think you're um, going to see guys like Wheeler, those guys particularly like really Wheeler, step up. Yeah. Gresham. Um, well, Gresham's a senior. Gresham's no, I'm not. Um, uh, I think you can see Brown. You can see Kamara. You're going to see uh, who am I thinking of? I don't um, know who you're thinking of. Either way, yeah. you're going to see those guys. Yeah. You're going to see those guys willing to step up in right. pressure situations. Um, I agree with you about uh, about Crean, though. Um, one of the things I noticed about him at Indiana was exactly that yeah. they would get in close situations. N- now you do have to acknowledge that Vanderbilt game, the way he handled, he, he didn't call a timeout right. when a lot of people thought he. I was like, oh, he's going to call a timeout. He didn't. Yeah. He let he let him play. Because he had his people in the court, he wanted presumably, and it worked out perfectly, right? Yeah. Because you go down, you get a shot, you go down, they miss a, a free throw, and then you're given a chance to win yeah. the game. Um, so, 
It's it's not a disaster that they're not making no, the tournament No, it's not. And it's not. And they and did not waste the best college basketball player in the country. I've heard that a lot. The idea that because he's a he very well made the top, top overall pick, yes. somehow Georgia's had the best player in college basketball. He's not the best player in college basketball. Waste period. He's not one of the top thirty. Best Look, he's college he's a players. lot of fun. Yeah. And when he is on, he definitely is among the top. He's clear for basketball he may be players. The most talented, right. but like he's also really young. He's just he's just he not was supposed there. to be a high school senior. This yeah, year. he's just not there yet. And I think with great NBA coaching and the right system, he could become an all star. Yeah. But he's not an all star right now. Yeah. And and I think that I don't think Georgia has wasted Anthony Edwards here. In fact, I would even argue the ex- level of excitement just simply having Anthony Edwards on the team is worth it. No matter what happens this year, oh. uh, I mean, again, you had Trey Young, you had Trey Young right there courtside at a game. Playing on the and get excited and everyone talking about this in the game on national. George has been on national television a lot, been on, like playing ESPN proper several times this year, playing teams other than Kentucky. They were on CBS. Yeah, right? that's what I mean. So, and their best game of the year was probably was yeah, on CBS. Yeah. And recruiting is still taking up, mm. which is good. Yeah, but it, but that'll stop if this happens next year. Yeah, that'll dry up. All right, Scott, what do we got? Uh, buy or sell trivia questions, uniform talk. Um, well, um, first, would you like questions? to? Questions? I know Will's Will's mentioned a bunch of stuff about, and I know that he's been writing a bunch of stuff. You want to talk about anything on a personal note? Oh, oh yes, on personal note. Nice. Um, sometime in the next couple of weeks, my cover story on Kevin Durant will be in New York Magazine. Uh, it has been filed. It's currently being edited, uh, but that story. Did you give him one of our? Waiting since last Saturday, business cards. I, I, I did not. In fact, I, I, I actually got very distressed about the state of the journalism industry because after the, the interview, it was a good interview. I was very impressed by him. He's a really smart guy. And after we left, he, well, I was actually in his, his place. It's very nice. I would um, hope and, so. And, uh, and at the end of the interview, I was like, okay, well, thank you for your time. I appreciate it. That wasn't too bad, was it? He's like, that's great. He's like, cool. Wait, so you don't, you, you don't want a picture? And I was like, no, no, I don't want to. Like, I'm like, wait, wait, are journalists coming in here and asking for pictures with you after the interviews? He's like, yeah, you're not supposed to do that. I'm like, no, you're not supposed to do that. These people are like social media thirsty. Like, act, act like you've been here. It is very un- – future journalists, young journalists, it is un- overwhelmingly unprofessional to interview someone and at the end of the interview say, oh, can we get a, can we get a picture together? Now, for, for example, hosting a TV show that is different because it's not a journalistic interview. It's basically a back-scratching promotional interview. But like the idea that like – he would give me uh, the amount of time that he gave me, and I could ask him like serious, probing questions, and at the end be like, "Okay, cheers, I'm with KD." Oh. That's not what you're supposed to do. So uh, I, I probably would have asked for a yeah. picture. Well, yeah, but, but like, I mean, if you would, I get what you're saying, yeah, and that yeah. that that restores yeah. the integrity of journalistic. <laughs> well, uh, there's endeavors. a level of um, arm's length transaction you should yeah. treat. It is as, a as a journalist, it, right. like it is a transaction, right? Yeah. Um, and, and also, uh, I'm gonna go right. Like what I like. Listen, not exactly. everything I'll tell you right now. Everything, not everything in that story is complimentary of Kevin Durant right. or complimentary of his agent, Rich Kleiman. And uh, I, I would say generally, I don't know if they're going to be happy with the story. I think they probably will. It's not like it's not a hatchet it's not job. A it's not a hatchet piece. Right. It's not a hit piece. But like, it's also not a PR piece where about everything about them is so wonderful and perfect. Where's it going to be published? It'll be a cover story in New York Magazine. Okay. And so the point is, is that like, I it would be it feels like it would be very wrong of me to be like. Uh, um, to write whatever I feel the story actually is, but be like, hey, me and KD. Like, you don't see Seth Emerson going up at the, at the end of every press conference and be like, me and the curbs. Yeah, picture curbs. Doing work. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. anyway, but yeah, so I've got. Well, that. that's why Scott and I took a, yeah. pl- a picture of Geoff Collins. Is like, we're yeah. never going to interview that guy. <laughs> but so, uh, but so yeah. also, we need to prove how short he is. <laughs> Another question. Remind the listeners where they can subscribe to get your downloads or whatever, <laughs> something <God>. substack or <laughs> substack your newsletter. Will your yeah, newsletter? Newsletter. No, but it was like some something called substack.com. Okay, I don't know why this is so difficult. <laughs> www.willleach.aol.com. There you go. That's not what it is. <laughs> Just, 
<laughs> it is. Uh, you can. I have a newsletter. William F. Leach. Substack. That's what it was. Yeah. I don't care at Substack. Tony and I already subscribed, so that's yeah. why it was hard for me to. Well, because I think you guys subscribed before I switched to Substack. Uh, that's yeah. why it's foreign to yeah, me. Exactly. Okay. But I think. But yes, I, I would say since I've moved to Substack, the the, new, the subscriptions have increased substantially. Good. And readers, if you're not subscribing, you should because uh, Will is on a streak. He's on a heater, guys. So okay. I, I read your article about the Astros. Yes. He also has, you need to subscribe because you can read his article about the Astros. Yeah. Can, you, can you, can you talk about that as a little bit like an, in a one minute frame? Okay. Um, I think that most of the anger toward the Astros is social media, uh, performance. And I think that, uh, I think that we all just have decided we want, don't get me wrong, Astros suck. I hope they get punished. I do not like the Astros. This is not like an Astros fan defending the Astros. Right, Screw right. those guys. No, you, you have no reason to like the Astros. Yeah, but like cheating has been a part of baseball forever. This is a more intense form of cheating, and therefore they are being punished in a more intense fashion than most people are punished for, punished for cheating. However, the idea that the Astros won the World Series because of this, is there is zero evidence to support that. There's hardly any evidence to support they even benefited from it. Now, now I know, I know, People are mad. I was just about to say, guys, before we start throwing stones, let's not forget we had, the, we, being the Braves, had two executives banned from baseball for life because of, um, you know, the yeah. how we spent the Latin American pool. So yeah. I, I would say talent acquisition is as much or more cheating than buzzers and banging well, I just, trash I just I, and my, the, my larger macro thing on this is I don't like it when people treat sports like a morality play because it's sure. not and, I'm, uh, and, I'm with Will and yeah, that, no, that is I, I that is what point. always frustrates me um, um, is when people act as like well you know the best way to live a moral life is not to like go to church like if you want to like, go to church Go find an ethos somewhere. Don't look for sports for that because sports will not provide it for you. And and I think that and, – and so I think when people get overly moralist about sports, I think what they're really doing is uh, um, trying – they're really just mad about something and trying to put it in some sort of framework of yeah. the right way or so on. I think anytime you have – I hate it when absolutely. Cardinals fans do that with the play the game. I don't like that either. So Yeah, and, and here's the thing. Like I love seeing the strategies – of trying when the pitcher and catcher have to come and meet because you're saying you're telling your son yeah. this the guy on second base the base runner he must have picked up on something so in this relay right, right, right. totally fine with me and I'm hoping yeah. that you aren't seeing people start starting to police the guy that hit a double that's now relaying and the signs. I, to and I also batter. like too that, I, that my ultimate thing on this too is I don't think this is even that really horrible for baseball. In the idea, a it's getting people talking about baseball right. in a way that, that, I, that I know this is, should not be the arbiter of anything. But like, but Stephen A. Smith, they talk about this on first take. Yeah. And I don't remember the last time they talked about they, they talked about baseball on first take. Probably since the Cubs won the World Series. Like nobody care. Like baseball, baseball is getting talked about the way the NBA is talked about right now right. in a way that I don't think is bad for baseball. And secondly. This is not about uh, um, so, uh, Aroldis Chapman or uh, or some or like a domestic abuser. Uh, get it? Like this is not that. This is not about PEDs. This is not about labor. This is actually about something that's involving the game itself. Someone trying to win and someone trying to stop them from winning. Uh, I don't think that's necessarily the worst the, the worst thing about this. But I do feel like we live in an age where um, you get points. By being more performatively outraged, and so therefore, I think people are being. I do not think think that everyone is actually as angry as they actually as as they really are, and I also don't think players are actually as angry as ever, as they are. I think certain players are angry and they're being loud about it. But my example of the opposite of that would be: remember when Mike Fears was the, the whistleblower on this? At first, the big concern was, "Oh my gosh, he's uh, they're going to throw at him all man. the time." He's a marked man. You saw it, like even David Freese, David Ortiz did this recently, but David Freese, the, uh, the Cardinals uh, hero, said, "I can't believe he would take that outside of the clubhouse." I guarantee you. There are more players upset at Mike Fears 
even if they are also mad at the Astros, I bet they are more angry at taking something that was inside the clubhouse and taking it outside than that. I don't think they should be, but I also th- I think that you got guys like Trevor Bauer who love to have a microphone in their face yeah. and love to like be do all that. And then you have guys like Cody Bellinger who feels like he got screwed out, screwed over for the World Series. I think he's wrong, but I also understand why he would be mad about that. And those are exactly the same players who absolutely would have taken the help if had they been given it. Of course, I mean, <laughs> obviously, they probably have. Yeah. Well, there, there was also a that's little, a good point. There's they also a little have. bit of the of uh, you saw this a lot in media when Me Too stuff started happening and the uh, the creepy creepy media lists all came out. All of a sudden, oh, I heard a bunch of guys who I knew had shady stuff going on, being like, "I am ashamed of these men Shh. in my industry." There's shock, a, yeah. shock. There's, there's gambling there's a, in this establishment. A lot of performative. Oh well, I'm one of the good ones mm-hmm. uh, to to hide some of the stuff you've done in the past. I have no doubt that's also going on. Yeah. On a personal note, Tony. Um, dude, I'm living my dad life right now. We are uh, knee deep in track season. Mm-hmm. Uh, my son Charlie finished second or third at the first uh, middle school uh, track meet in shot put. So That's his awesome. his game has come around on the shot putting game. Um, and, uh, seriously, that's, that's where I am right now. Um, some traveling stuff. If you see me out and about in, in various cities, Savannah or Montreal and coming up, say, say, Hey, yeah, we're so, going to cross paths in Montreal, but not really. Yeah. So, so the weird thing is Scott is going to probably going to Montreal for spring break. I'll be there for a conference in late April. Um, anyway, yeah. if you ever been to Montreal, uh, listeners, you know it's an awesome city. I am going to be there at a better time than Scott because he's going to see snow uh, or an ice storm. Or Maybe something. what I'll do is I'll take one of our Wait and Since Last Saturday podcast stickers and put it in a urinal. Why? Right. Montreal. May, and if I find it, I'll take a picture. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> what is this? What is this podcast <laughs> about the American I football? <laughs> I think I turned into like a, a different accent there. Poutine. The so for for me, uh, keep an eye out. I will share it probably after next Tuesday. But I'm working on a documentary uh, for Downtown Academy or Downtown Ministries. They're the school that's in downtown Athens, and so. I was uh, riding on the back of their bus. Like, I wasn't on the back. I was in the bus. But uh, taking video <laughs> you were, you in a were rainstorm. like the dog in vacation. Yeah, exactly. They let you in. Not quite. <laughs> or Mitt Romney's dog they left on the roof of the time. <laughs> I'll tell you what. I, I, have a, I have a pretty good constitution, but I could not get off that bus fast enough because I'm looking at a video screen in the back. Oh, yeah. Shaking like this, trying to keep my camera steady. You have and a steady cam? Well, I didn't. I was doing it. It's raw. I mean, this is documentary. Yeah. It's run and gun, man. This is so. also steady. This is saving Private Ryan. Yeah, uh, exactly. b- b- Storming the beach. So, yeah. That, but, uh, yeah, I'll share that when that comes out. So that's uh, my right, thing. Cool. So um, other than that. It is. But to, to cut Scott's credit, yeah. by the way, Scott, we are all very busy. Scott is very busy very right busy. now. Very. And he is, uh, he is uh, taking the time out to. Uh, to uh, I, well, I feel like we should curse more. To make it no, we should curse less because we don't want him to. No, I told him I was like, look, we can only do a thirty minute podcast, and we're an hour in. But that's yeah, fine. that's okay. That's okay. Um, lot, there's actually a lot of stuff. There going is, there and, is, and all the d- jokes that we <laughs> right. all told. Right. Yeah, that's not that. um, I so want to hear the guesses. I'm gonna I'm gonna skip the buy or sell. Yeah, that's because um, last uh, podcast early February, one of our listeners, uh, Timothy Watts. Yeah, I uh, sent a long email that I barely missed of just some questions, and he basically wanted us to choose a couple and answer. And so I figured I, I sent him a response saying, "Hey, man, I totally blanked on it." So I wanted to make it up to him by asking a few of the questions he submitted, and that'll be our that's end it, of the podcast. It. Okay, fair enough. Fair enough. So. Timothy says, howdy, y'all. And I think he lives out in California, so I think it's awesome that he still says, howdy, y'all. Hope y'all are doing well. I wanted to send in a few questions, and they're below. So I'm going to go right here to number one. Can you give a quick game-by-game of wins versus losses for our upcoming season at this point in time? I say this with all of us understanding there's so much more that can happen between now and September. I I can't believe we have to wait until September. So... Can you give just a quick thumbnail scratch on the 12 games? What would be maybe a range of wins, loss, like something that would be amazing, which obviously would be 12 and 0 versus maybe a less than stellar? Yeah. I think, I think not only are two regular season and two SEC losses on the table, I think they're actually more likely than not. That doesn't mean you can't still win the SEC with that. It doesn't mean you still can't make the playoff with that. 
because I think that would be a good test, losing in Alabama and then, say, losing another game, but still winning the SEC East and still winning the SEC Championship game. I would bet that would still get you in to the playoff, I would think, depending on what, what was going on. Uh, but I think that's very much on the table tomorrow, uh, next year. Not so much that Georgia is worse than Florida or worse than so on, but just everyone's a little bit better, I would say. And when everyone's a little bit better and Georgia is going to have some sort of transition next year, uh, one way or the other, uh, I can see one of those games Biden up, uh, come up and bite them. Yeah, I, I think that's right. It probably depends on what happens with the offense. Uh, we know the defense is going to be really good, but we also saw what the limitations are with a really good defense and offense that doesn't quite know exactly what it is. Which is the exact opposite of what we said a year ago, by the way. Oh, 100%. Going into that season. Oh, yeah. 100%. So, like, keep that in mind, too. Um, so, yeah, I think 12-0 and 0 is on the table. Yeah. I don't think it's impossible. Um, I think more level-headed realistic is, uh, you know, I'd set the over-under at one-and-a-half losses and probably take the under, but... And I'd two, probably take the over. Two that. two losses wouldn't surprise me. Yeah. I reserve the right to change my mind about that in August. Okay. And right here he says, could each of you name one or two potential difference makers for this upcoming year's roster? I feel like there's so much to like about the dogs this year. Aside from Zeus and Newman, I'm hoping that Nolan Smith, Nakobe Dean, and Kendall Milton all do very well. I have no doubt Pickens is going to kill it. I mean, Pickens will is and will remain probably my answer to that question along with the count. I think um, the the name I keep hearing, in fact, I was listening to another Georgia podcast the other day, scrolling through. Trader. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Keely Ringo, the freshman out of Arizona, I think he is really tabbed as a potential five-star difference maker coming in, kind of like you've seen in, in the past with some of our, with, with some of our freshmen. So, I'm gonna. I'm just gonna go off the board there and say keep an eye for uh, Keely Ringo, and of course, uh, I like your pick on Kendall Milton because with losing Swift, I mean Zeus is back there, but you know Kirby's proven that you know he's gonna try to run two or three deep with Harry and gone and with Swift gone. It'd be fun to see Pickens just blow up. Blow up, yeah, year. yeah, yeah. Have a Chad Johnson almost kind oh, of. Oh yeah, yeah. 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 Again, I love tumultuous pain in the ass wide receivers. Yeah, there's. Uh, and then finally. I've tried to keep something Will said in mind, and I think it's, it's always always a good strategy. Always and, a good strategy. And listen to what he says here. He says, "And I think it's made me a happier and more well-adjusted fan." Wow, That's what happens Will. when you keep me in mind. He said something to the tune of, "We should be grateful. It's not always going to be like this." And he was absolutely right. Great recruiting, great replacement for the inevitable turnover. Division titles constantly knocking on the natty door. But I digress from my original question. Do y'all feel like the fan base is handling our progress and disappointments well? Well, first off, that's Muhammad Gandhi that said that. Or will. No. Uh, Gandhi cribbed my shit. <laughs> <laughs> um, he does that. It's hard to say whether or not the fan base is handled as well, right? Uh, I think we, I think we, meaning the three of us, live in a, well, I say three of us, people on social media. Let's let's put that. Live in a bubble of um, we live in a bubble where a lot of it, 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 much like the real world, a lot of things are magnified in a way that's hard to say. Um, me personally, I'm riding the wave. I mean, we are on and in my lifetime an unprecedented well, in my lifetime, my fandom, like my sincere fandom, uh, a, a run like we haven't seen since the early '80s, and. Um, Despite what national media would have you to believe that uh, you know Kirby equals Rick, uh, circa oh one to oh five, um, the the of course these things could change with time. Uh, remember the the hire that we were all excited about in 05 was Willie Martinez. Um, that <laughs> we, we could come we could come back and see parallels. There we picked Monk a good time to do a podcast. I think if we'd done it like. Seven years ago, or, or way too early, and if yeah. it was just like, like crap. Well, we're we're twelve, we're ten and two again, and playing hey, an outback. I know people that have been doing an Illinois basketball podcast for, for eight years, seven years. And it's yeah. been dark. Yeah. Yeah. So, so, so to answer your question about the fandom is like it probably depends on what segment of fandom you're talking to. I can only really speak for myself. I, I mean, I want to win a national championship so badly, but I don't define Georgia football success by national championships only. Um, 
and we're in a time. We're in a time where uh, we are in the discussion every year, and I, I firmly believe it will happen. Uh, and we're far better positioned to do that at any time in my football fandom since the early 80s or potentially 03 or 04. And, and I agree with that, but I would also say that uh, in a similar way, you have to judge the program the way that it, by the goals it is clearly setting itself. Yep. And the goal it is setting is unquestionably we are going to win the national championship. Put and a, if they crystal football and Butts Mayer Hall yeah. every year. And if they don't do that, I think it is not in unfair for Georgia fans. While I am sensibility wise, much more like you, uh, that, uh, I think that if you are a Georgia football fan and you see the expectations and you see the money they're raising and how much, how expensive everything is and how much football has gotten, I would argue at the expense of some other things, uh, both athletic and non-athletic related, uh, I think it's reasonable to, if they don't reach that goal, uh, to be upset. Yeah. And I'm going to enjoy it no matter what. Honestly, you know, I enjoy going to Georgia basketball games, and they haven't been really good since they they played one tournament game and lost it since I got here, and I still love it. And uh, I'm going to be able. I'm going to if Georgia were eight and four every year, it would be not. It would be a little. It would be disappointing, but I would still love going out to those those games, and I'd still love being a part. Oh yes. Yeah. So uh, uh, yes, it's better now by far. But um, um, you know, I think that uh, I'm going to enjoy it either way. But I think by the standards that they have set themselves, um, they better win the title. And just the fact that I mean, we're, we've come full circle now. Kirby Snipes. Saban's right hand man, and that's how we're ending the podcast again. I mean, it's just amazing. It's the the time that we're in uh, compared to when we started this podcast. To think that I mean, Scott Cochran was still the man back in 2015, and if somebody would have said, "Oh yeah, we're going to get him to come coach special, special teams," teams. <laughs> I'd be like, "No way!" I mean, just the idea of that moment when you realize in that game when Alabama was here that not only was Alabama better than Georgia but they were doing something entirely different than what Georgia was doing. Yeah, they're playing a different game. Uh now they're not. And that does not mean that Georgia is going to win a national championship. It means they're more likely to and they're in an excellent position to and if you were to tell me if you were to put a gun to my head and don't but if you were to put a gun to my head and say is Georgia going to win a national championship in the next 10 years or not I would say yes. Um, but if they don't, and they might not, like it is really hard to win a national championship. Uh, if they don't, uh, I, I don't think that, uh, uh, I, I think fans will be mad and I will be disappointed. Fans will be mad and I don't think it's unfair uh, for them to be mad. Yeah. Well, guys, we are a couple of weeks away from the start of spring practice. We are six weeks away from G day. Um, we got to do this again in a month or so because yeah. spring practice will be starting up, and I'm sure we'll have hired Bill Belichick or somebody. <laughs> yeah, um, his son. <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah. Uh, his son is creepy. He is creepy. <laughs> so when, when's the NFL draft? I mean, we're not we're not draft Knicks, but end of, end of April. I think yeah, it's like April. I've got it on my phone. Yeah. It's in Vegas, right? They're taking over. Yes, the city. they're taking people across a boat like a, a right, right on the edge. Yeah, yeah, that's right, Bellagio. That's right. right. Yeah. April, um, so. Are they going to play Claire de Lune, which is one of my very favorite scenes of all movies? It's like the end of. I don't know, but there's, I think, Ocean's nine 11. or ten Georgia players in Indianapolis. Oh, yeah, right, right now. now. Yeah, I forgot about that. I think so. the only one that didn't get an invite was Tay Crowder. Yeah. That maybe he was borderline. That's a mistake. Yeah. Despite. No sleep on Tay Crowder. Hot Rod's there. Yeah. Jake Fromm and his small hands small are there. Hands, small hands. Joe Burrow and his small hands are there. Yeah, but Jake Fromm has all his fingers. So he is not <laughs> missing. No, missing he's the doing, end of little. What did we say the name of the Scott band was? The end of a little finger. He's doing just missing fine. little finger. Missing, no, I think it's end of a little finger. End of the little end finger. I'm gonna write that down. Finger. End of the little finger. You say Scott band. I I I say no I say, emo. I say, I say the guy that uh, the lady that. I don't. I don't think Jake Fromm has any uh, worries about what <laughs> uh, the little finger. Cade Mays' dad has worries about. I yeah. think Jake Fromm will do just fine on his own. Yeah, I think he's doing great. I've seen him to the Patriots in a couple of mock drafts. Yeah, wouldn't be a terrible place. But um, all right, uh, we'll be able to talk about that later. Though. Hot rod to the Falcons. Hot rod. Hot rod. Uh, someone. I won't. I, I have to say, whoever uh, the Arizona Cardinals are my favorite team, and Buffalo just because of family stuff might be second. And, and uh, but whoever gets whoever gets hot rod, I'm going to be a fan of that team. Yeah. 
could buy a jersey. And if and if he ever misses a big field goal and the fans go after him, I'll be like, you leave him alone. <laughs> right. <laughs> you touch my heart, Ron. <laughs> that sounded different in my head. <laughs> All right. Uh, have a great one. Uh, we'll talk to you guys soon. Go dogs. Go dogs. And thanks so much for listening. Remember to follow us on social media. Twitter and Instagram are two of the best ways to keep in touch with us and our shows. Our handle for both platforms is at WSLS Podcast. And we'll be back in March with a spring practice breakdown. So make sure to go check the links in our show notes uh, so you can subscribe to Will's newsletter. You heard him talk about all the articles he was writing, and he does have quite a few up there. So uh, I think it's uh, williamfleach.substack.com, but I'll link it in the show notes. And also you can check the show notes to get the link to my website where I'm selling some Georgia football photo prints, and I have um, about five or six of them listed on the website for purchase. And that'll do it. Have a great rest of your week. We'll see you on campus in a few months for G-Day. And as always, go dogs.